What's up you guys, my name is Eric Moretton and today I'm going to take this beautiful Dingwall D-Rock Standard Series and put it through another hot topic that is going on in the music community here. And the, the topic of today's video is going to be, well as you can probably tell from the title, that a lot of people think you can't tune down with light gauge strings even on a multi-scale instrument, whether it's a guitar or a bass. And I'm going to prove that wrong because I have this bass tuned all the way down to drop B with the standard scale strings that came with it. This is like a 45 to 100 gauge, which is usually meant for like standard E tuning. And I took it all the way down to drop B. And you're going to hear it in a second in a full mix. I'll probably play a little bit for you um, just on its own so you can hear it how well it works. And maybe we'll even go a little bit lower just because, I don't know, let's make the internet scream or something. So without further ado, let's get into this and then I'll talk about the bass and my experiences living with a D-Rock and a Dingwall bass for almost a year. So, let's go! So, this is my beautiful 2020 Dingwall D-Rock Standard. You know, I wish it was still called the D-Bird, but, you know, unfortunately you can't have that. Can't have nice things, right? So, I bought this bass back in 2021 because I needed another bass to go with my Fender Jaguar that's hanging on the wall there. That bass is great, it sounds awesome. It's great for standard tunings and for, you know, maybe things as low as drop C, just for the strings that I have on it right now and bearing in mind that it's only a 34 inch scale bass. So I wanted something that could handle you know, some of the lower tunings as well that I use, whether it's on a seven or an eight string or just a detuned six string. So the Dingwall just kind of fit all the boxes because one, it's you know, a Canadian company. You know, I like to support the home team, being a Canadian myself. And this is also another unique body style. I love the, like, the Firebird kind of like offset body style like this. It's very unique. It's not like some of the other basses I was looking at that were just kind of like another strat or like a traditional like double cut bass, which, you know, it's fine, but you know, I wouldn't mind something a little bit different, especially because, you know, these are harder to find and not really that common as you'd say like a Fender, like in a local music store, at least in Canada as well. So it hit that box. Um, I wanted to try passives again, and after a lot of the demos that I was listening to and reading and watching of the D-Rocks that it sounded like even with the fan fret here and the multi-scale um, setup, even with these pickups, that you were still able to get some sort of that active tone. And even then, if you feel like you're not going to get it, just throw a bit of a compressor on it and I found that really helped. I just adjusted my picking and I noticed that the compressor really helped um, bring this bass to life even more than it already is. So that and also I felt I didn't need a 5 string which might sound crazy for you know a metal guy who's going to tune down, but I thought with the, the multi-scale instrument, especially with the 36.25 inch 
uh, scale on the low side and going all the way to around 34 inches on the, the shorter side here. Um, I felt, you know, this could probably do what I want to do, you know, especially if I run, you know, any kind of string, it should be able to do fine because that's the whole point of a multi-scale instrument is to, you know, have, you know, get away with some lighter strings and tune lower, right? As you probably heard in the video, this is tuned to drop B with like a hundred gauge and, and it holds tuning. And just for reference, um, we actually use this bass, myself and my friend Andrew Bain, and we use this on the Slipknot self-titled like Heaviest Wrist video. And we used this exact bass with these exact strings and we tuned it all the way down to F sharp for the song Scissors even. So it held for that and even Andrew was kind of blown away that like, I can't believe it works. And that's the whole point of this is, you know, we can't believe it works because even if you buy a bass like this, you can get away with using like 100 gauge, you know, light gauge bass strings, even if you're in a pinch and tune it all the way down to maybe drop B or something like that. Now, if you're gonna go lower to F sharp, like I did for scissors, like I really had to adjust my playing technique and pick a lot lighter, maybe up the compressor as well because, you know, it might go out of tune. It didn't in my case, but everyone's mileage will differ. So, you know, just play with caution and figure out what works for you because there's no right or wrong for whatever works for you, especially for string gauges, which is the ongoing debate. You know, most of you guys know that I'm a huge Pantera fan and Dimebag uses 9-42s in C-sharp standard on a Gibson scale length guitar. So, if that says anything, like, whatever's good for him is probably good for me and probably good for you because he made a career out of playing music. So, anyways, take all that string stuff with a grain of salt and just go out and have fun and that's the whole point of this video, to have fun. And at the end of the day, am I happy with this bass? Of course I am. I love it. I think this bass is amazing, um, especially for the money that, that I paid for it. Um, I got a really nice deal, especially with the friends at Long and McQuaid, Vancouver. They really helped me throw this together. Shout out to my boy, Ben. And would I do it again? 100% I would. Is there anything I want to complain about the bass? Not really. I mean, the only thing I can maybe think about is maybe the output jack down here. I don't like barrel style jacks, but that's just like a personal preference of mine if I'm being really nitpicky. Do I need 24 frets? Not really on a bass, on a guitar. Yeah, I do, but I'm not flying all over on a bass, but you know, different strokes for different folks. Do I want an active preamp system? Maybe, but actually the passive pickups here sound great. And if I really want that active sound, maybe I'll go buy a dark glass pedal or maybe I'll just use like a VST or a plug-in of some sort on my amp or on my computer just to get myself where I want to be. So anyways, with all that rambling, thanks for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed it. And make sure you hit the thumbs up on the way out if you liked it. Subscribe if you liked it even more. Leave a comment, let me know what you think about the whole string gauge debate and multi-scales and tuning down and all that good stuff. And I will see you in the next video. Take care.